and welcome to our online service of worship, prayer and reflection. My name is Anne and it is my duty and my joy to be one of the ministers to the churches in and around Kirby Lonsdale in beautiful South Cumbria. Our reading today is one of the best known stories in the Bible. The miraculous feeding of large crowds who gathered to see and hear Jesus. It is one of the few accounts that features in all four of the Gospels. In Matthew, Mark, Luke and today we hear the version from John's Gospel. The fact that it appears in all four Gospels means it must be really important. The fact that it is in all four Gospels means that it is also one of the best known. One of those passages where we may think, yeah, heard that one before, know all about it and stop really listening. When that happens, maybe try a new way of listening. Today, I am going to try Gospel contemplation, an Ignatian way of reading scripture. Gospel contemplation invites us to insert ourselves into the reading. This allows us to taste, see, smell, hear and feel what is going on in each scene. We may envision ourselves as an onlooker, one of the characters in the story, maybe even Jesus. As we engage our imagination in this way, we are able to spend time in Jesus' presence. To get the full effect, you may need to read or listen to the passage several times, but this approach can make the Bible and the presence of Jesus seem very real. I hope it works for you. So let's hear John's version of the feeding of the 5,000. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 6. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves, left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is come into the world. When Jesus realised that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, got into a boat and started across the lake to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The lake became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, 
they saw Jesus walking on the lake and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the last few weeks, we've been studying Mark's Gospel. We've seen Jesus selecting his disciples, healing many people of their various illnesses, and even raising Jairus' young daughter from the dead. We've also had the harrowing story of the beheading of John the Baptist. This week, the lectionary switches us straight into the Gospel of the disciple John, and we immediately feel the difference. Whilst Mark is keen to tell the details of events, John's Gospel account is trying to explain the theology behind those events. Our reading takes us to an episode described in all four Gospels. It takes place in the third year of Jesus' ministry, at a time close to that of the Jewish Passover feast. Jesus and his disciples had crossed over from Capernaum to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, near a place called Bethesda Julius. We are told that a large crowd had followed them because Jesus had healed many people whilst they were in Capernaum. Then Jesus asks Philip, who was brought up locally, where they could buy bread for such a large number of people. Philip points out that the cost would be prohibitively expensive, indicating that he does not consider that Jesus can, or should, do anything about the situation. Andrew, however, always befriending the people in the crowd, produces a boy with loaves and fishes. Now, barley loaves were considered to be the lowest quality bread, as barley was thought to be the food for cattle. The fish would have been pickled fish the size of sardines. Very little to share between close to 5,000 men. But unlike Philip, Andrew hoped that Jesus would come up with a solution. Looking up to heaven, Jesus gave thanks to the Father and then distributed both foods to those who were sat in groups on the grass. I've always wondered where the baskets came from that the disciples collected the leftovers in. Apparently, when a Jewish man went on a journey, he took a basket with them, with him. One end was used to carry some hay for bedding and the other, the paraphernalia he needed to be ritually clean. As I mentioned earlier, this story appears in all four Gospels, so it must have been considered important. So what do we learn? You know, I think that this event was as much, if not more, for the disciples than for the crowd. Yes, people got a free meal and had some of their number cured of their afflictions. Was it this event, together with the fact that their Bible told them to expect a prophet, enough to make the crowd decide that Jesus should be the one to lead them against the Romans? Jesus knew that this was not his destiny. So as Matthew reports in his Gospel, after asking the disciples to go back to Capernaum and he would join them later, Jesus slipped away up the mountainside to pray. Just before we consider what John is telling us, we must also think about the strange report of Jesus walking on the water. 
apparently near Passover time, there would have been a full moon. And that is how Jesus was able to see the disciples were in trouble in the boat, straining at the oars. What surprises me is that burly fishermen would be scared of a bit of rough weather on the lake. But in those days, storms were thought to be caused by chaos. Hence, they were afraid that Jesus was a ghost. As soon as Jesus got into the boat, suddenly they arrived at the shore. John's account is full of symbolism, which tells us about the person of Jesus. The disciples had spent nearly three years with Jesus, but did they really know who he was? They knew he had power to heal people's diseases and infirmities. Especially for Philip, Jesus demonstrates his power over natural components, the bread and fish. Jesus could multiply these God-given basics into enough to satisfy even the largest of crowds. Philip had probably been with the disciples when Jesus turned water into wine, but he still had not learned the capabilities of Jesus. Philip represents many people today who will have nothing to do with God and Jesus and completely underestimate what is possible if they should turn to God. Then we have Andrew, who by befriending the small boy was able to provide the building blocks of food for Jesus, although I'm sure that Jesus didn't really need them. But Andrew also brings the young boy to Jesus. Excellent practice for his future work as an evangelist. Then we have the disciples setting out across the lake without Jesus. We would have expected this to be straightforward. After all, these fishermen went on the lake on a regular basis. But without Jesus, when a storm blows up, they soon get frightened. Isn't that just like us in life? Some problems beset us or a big decision has to be made and we soon panic. What was Jesus doing at this time? Well, he was watching over the disciples, just like he watches over us from his vantage point on higher ground. He knows that they need him, so he puts himself out and walks on the water to get to them. He demonstrates he has power over the water, the wind and the waves. What does Jesus say to them when he arrives at the boat? It is I. Don't be afraid. Through the Old Testament, the Jewish Bible, God calls himself I am. As he approaches the boat, Jesus actually tells the disciples that he is God. Then they all immediately arrive at their destination. Jesus is also Lord of time. So in this short reading, John shows us Jesus demonstrating to his disciples that he is the Lord of natural resources the elements of water, waves and wind, and of time. John also shows us two possible human reactions to Jesus, a lack of belief in what God can do, as shown at this time by Philip, compared to a person open to the possibilities of what Jesus can do, as shown by Andrew. The question for us is, are we open to the possibilities of what Jesus can do in our lives? And are we prepared to share our beliefs so that we encourage others to come to Jesus? Amen.
On Isaiah 40 Isaiah 40 O oh, Jacob, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? O oh, Israel, how can you say God ignores your rights? Have you not heard? Have you not understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. So these prayers have a response. When I say, help us to wait on and trust in you, please reply, please renew our strength. Lord, we thank you that although you are the everlasting creator of all the earth, you love us and say that we can call you our Father, Daddy. We thank you that you are steadfast and true. You never grow weary of us. Your strength is constant and you understand us completely. Father, help us to wait on and trust in you. Please renew our strength. Jesus, Thank you for your life of healing and service, given up to death for love of us. We are sorry that we've not listened to or been open to your words, or understood the depth of your devotion and sacrifice. We have failed to follow in your way and closed our ears to your guidance. Through weakness, ignorance and our own deliberate fault, we have fallen short of your gold standard. So we pause for any specific confessions that you may be moved to make in the sirens. Lord, in your mercy, Please forgive us. Jesus, help us to wait on and trust in you. Please renew our strength. Holy Spirit, we confess that sometimes we find life today to be bewildering. We can feel that we are swimming against the tide of apathy, cynicism, bitterness, hatred and outright war. We become weary and weakened and feel powerless against the darkness. We bring to you now all those whom we know are struggling in body, mind or spirit. So we pause here for silent prayer. Remind us again that you are the light, 
the source of all life and power. May our hearts soar high on wings like eagles. May our spirits be recharged and not grow weary and our bodies continue to walk and not faint. Holy Spirit, help us to wait on and trust in you. Please renew our strength. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. It's been great to be here with you today. Uh, those who are listening and those who are watching. Particular thanks to everyone who's helped make and shape this service. Before we end, I thought I'd offer us some questions to ponder. I wonder why the child offered his food to Jesus. I wonder why the child offered his food to Jesus. What made him do it? What was he expecting? What made him do it? What was he expecting? On a more practical note, I wonder how long it took to get everyone to sit down in groups. I wonder how long it took to get everyone to sit down in groups. I wonder what they did with the leftovers. I wonder what they did with the leftovers. I wonder what else was left on that mountainside. I wonder what else was left on that mountainside. As we draw our service to a close, I invite you to take one or two of these questions with you into the week to keep thinking about. I really hope you have a good week. Stay safe and God bless. Thank you for joining us. Bread of heaven.